weekly live stream. My name is Alicia and in this week's live lesson we are going to talk about how to use study tools to boost your learning. In this week's live lesson I'm going to talk about a few tools that have been really super helpful uh, for me and my own personal studies and I'm going to talk about how I use them and hopefully how you can use them too. So I've chosen I think five main tools to focus on today and then I'm going to talk in depth about a couple. I've also I actually have samples as well to show you how I personally use these things and maybe you can get some ideas and of course you can share with your online classmates. So as you join, please, please, please make sure to hit the like button and of course share this video so other people can find today's lesson. While we wait, a couple of super cool announcements. First announcement is about this banner at the bottom of the screen. It says get your printable flashcards. If you have never seen this before, our team has a bunch of flashcards that have pictures on them that you can use for your vocabulary studies. So if you are if you have a goal this year to work on building your vocabulary, you can check this out. You can get these flashcards. There's a set of 1500. There's more than 1500 uh, flashcards, vocabulary flashcards that have pictures on them. So you can learn faster. When you have a picture, you remember it a lot better. So you can get these for free. You can find these at EnglishClass101.com. If you scroll down, you can see this picture, but you just need to put uh, your name and your email address to get a free account to download these. So you can print these out, cut them up, uh, study them, and so on. I'm going to talk about some flashcard tips later today. Um, but if you want to get that, check it out. Those are totally free flashcards. That's announcement number one. Announcement number two, if you have questions for me, please send it to me, not in the live stream chat, <laughs> not in Instagram DMs, not in uh, Facebook comments, whatever. Please send it to me on the official Ask Alicia question and answer page where I will maybe choose your question and maybe <laughs> answer it. So make sure to send the official or send to the official question page because there are so many comments every day on our team's uh, social media pages, and it's not it's it's a job. It's one person's job maybe to to check everything. I cannot do it. I have other things to do. So please send it to the official question submission page, EnglishClass101.com/ask-hyphen. Alicia, that's very long, so check the YouTube uh, description for a link to find that. Send it to me, please, at that address. Uh, I think everything is okay. Yes, everybody is here. Hello, good, yeah, YouTube is here. What's up? Um, let's see, YouTube, hi, Nohora, hi, Buena Fe, hi, Matilda, what's up, Silvio, Pankaj, hi, Martin, hello, Juan, what's up, Miguel, Sergey, Nang Nang, Jonathan, hello, everyone, welcome. Okay, uh, so while we wait, let's see, Facebook is on the way. I think that's cool. So I am going to, uh, I'm going to show again today's lesson title. So today we are going to do uh, a lesson about study tools. So we're going to talk about uh, how to use, I chose uh, five tools, uh, how to use tools to boost your learning. So not just watching this video, for example, right? How do you use other tools to help you to improve and to increase the speed of your learning, right? How do you learn more efficiently? So not just, you know, grammar and vocabulary and phrases, right, and pronunciation, but how do you study uh, so you remember things and so you can use um, what you learned uh, in the future. So. Let's get started, I guess. Let's get started with uh, today's feature study tool. So I chose five for me. These are my five must-have study tools. Of course, if you have a study tool that you think is the best, <laughs> put it in the comments and tell us about it, um, and you can share that with your classmates. So uh, I chose five today I want to talk about, and I want to explain a little bit uh, about these different things, how I use them, and give you some ideas 
and hopefully help you with your uh, study plans for 2023. Okay, so the first one, I think the most important tool for me definitely maybe for you also is a notebook seriously this for me is the most important tool this is old but this is an actual one of my actual study notebooks so i think a notebook for your studies uh, is at least for me the most important tool you can have so i'm going to talk about all the things i do with notebooks uh, and you can do uh, in part two today. But a notebook I think is the most important thing because uh, the biggest point is that writing yourself, so not just uh, watching the video or listening to the podcast or checking the flashcards, so not just inputting, but making sure you have a chance to write the things you learn is so, so important. Making sure you have a place uh, to, to actually physically create. So you make something with your hands, with the language you're learning. Having a space to do that is so important. And I'm going to talk more about this later, about um, why this is such a good tool. But first, if you do not have a study notebook, not on your computer either, no, not a note file, but a physical notebook, maybe it's a bunch of papers, that's okay something to write in that you use every time you study. This, I think, is the most important tool to have. Okay, so that's tool number one for me. I'm going to talk about that later, so more points on that in part two. Second, the second thing uh, that I think is absolutely essential you have to have is flashcards. So flashcards, of course, uh, are very, very popular. I know I don't know any student who never who's never used a flashcard, but I have like old fashioned ones like these that I, I found. These are old from me. So where I, I wrote, you know, the, the word I was studying, this is Japanese. And then I wrote the English and the reading on the back. I have numbers on them, you know. These are very old. These are very old, like uh, handwritten flashcards. But digital flashcards, I think, are wonderful. If you have seen my videos, our team's videos, you probably know about spaced repetition flashcards. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about this in part three, how to use flashcards. But this is my second must-have study tool because, of course, we need to learn vocabulary and these are a great way to introduce vocabulary uh, and to see it often. And this is an easy way for you to add new words. Like when you find a new word, you can add it to your flashcards, right? So this is good to do. But nowadays, <clears throat> usually I prefer to use like uh, digital flashcards. So with spaced repetition built into them. So I will talk about this in part three, okay? All right. It looks like Facebook has joined us. Cool. Welcome, Facebook. All right. Hi, everybody. So we are talking about must-have study tools. Great. So... Let's go to the third one. So uh, let's take a look. My third uh, must-have study tool uh, for me personally, I think, is recording tools. So when I say recording tools, usually for me, I mean I use my phone. Um, if you prefer to use like a microphone or a video camera, that's great. So three, I use recording tools um, not just for language learning. Like when I'm, if I want to study music, if I'm studying something on the piano, for example, or even sometimes with food, something I'm cooking, I record what I did, yeah? So I, let's, like, for example, with language, when you record yourself speaking, you watch a video and you record yourself speaking, listen to that later or watch the video later because you will see that how you feel when you speak and how you think you sound when you speak is different <laughs> from the video, right? You can notice things about yourself when you watch the recording or when you listen to the recording. So this, I know, feels really scary to lots of people. The, I see your comments and I felt this way too. Like, I do not want <laughs> to listen to my voice. I don't like it. It feels really strange, right? But recording tools are so helpful. Like if you record yourself, for example, giving a short presentation, you can hear your pronunciation issues sometimes. You can hear parts that feel 
unnatural to you, you can use these tools and go, oh, I need to work on that in my next study session. After you record a few study sessions too, you will be able to see your progress. Like this is something I've noticed, especially in music practice and music study. I record, you know, the first session, the second session, ten, session number 10, and I go, wow, I made progress. So recording tools are great for checking your progress and for helping you to see things to fix, things to work on that you maybe didn't realize when you made the recording. So this for me is also extremely important. Uh, like for language, maybe photographs aren't so great, like video and audio recording is great. So you can use your smartphone to do this. That's what I do. So that's what I like to do. Okay. Uh, if you have any other study, uh, study tools as well, you can definitely send them in the chat. Maria asks, when another video? We have a video like every day <laughs> on our channel, on the English Class 101 YouTube channel. And this is a live video now. I cannot physically make another video while I'm recording one video. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. Okay, let's go to number four. The fourth thing I still use as a native English speaker for English words is an audio dictionary. An audio dictionary is great because when you find a new word, you're reading a book or you're reading the newspaper and you find a new word and you go, this is, this is strange. I don't know how to say this word out loud. You go to your audio dictionary and you click a button and it, sell, it tells you the word. It says the word out loud. So audio dictionary, um, most online dictionaries, I should say the big online dictionaries, English dictionaries, for example, Merriam-Webster, yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, so they have a button you can click to get the pronunciation. And that is so helpful. Like sometimes I find a new word, I find a new English word and it's really strange. And I go, how do I say that? It's a really rare word. I check the dictionary for the pronunciation too. So an audio dictionary is super helpful. So if you are reading a book, if you study alone, as well. If you study alone and you find a new word, you don't know how to say it, you can check the dictionary and check the audio file to get the pronunciation of that word so you make sure from the beginning you always say that word correctly. Yeah. So this is really uh, essential, I think. It's as a native speaker also. <laughs> it's essential. It's a must have for me too. So I use I use this tool, yeah, regularly. I used an audio dictionary for a different language yesterday as well, too. So make sure you have access to some kind of audio file, yeah? Okay, let's see. Oh, some of you are sending your ideas. Great, for your must-have study tools. Uh, Michael says, in any translator app like Google, it's easy to save a new word to favorite. This is a better option, in my opinion. Ah, like you mean, instead of adding it to a flashcard, if that works for you, Cool. Yeah, that's interesting. So you mean you translate the new word and then you save it as a favorite? I could see that, but I'm always really careful with automatic translation. Google has become a lot better over the years, Google and other online translations, for like single words at a time. But I'm often really careful with that because sometimes those translation machines, they don't pick up the nuance of the situation. They don't pick up like the fine details of the context. So it's a good tip usually for one word at a time, but I'm usually a little bit careful of that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Matilda says, I think face-to-face -face communication is a good way to improve speaking. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. If you have a study partner, that is an amazing study tool, <laughs> but I wasn't thinking of people for study tools. I was thinking of, uh, you know, physical objects we can use today. But yes, of course, that's good. Um, some of you are asking which audio dictionary do you recommend? Oh, I mentioned um, the, I mentioned my favorite dictionary that I use for my work, which is Merriam-Webster. Here, let me put it on screen. Let me write this really quick so that you can see. So this would be, um, so this is a, I'll, I'll call this a dictionary with audio, yeah? So you can find, uh, on merriamwebster.com. This is uh, just this is the basic uh, English dictionary. Native speakers 
use this dictionary to check the meaning of words. And they also have um, a learner's section. So if you have um, trouble understanding the normal definition, they have uh, a section, a definition section for learners, a simple definition. So they have audio files uh, you can listen to in American English pronunciation. If you're studying British English, you can check other dictionaries um, for those. But this is the one, uh, I use this dictionary all the time. It's on my favorites. <laughs> like, that's, that's my favorite to use, okay? Others, um, let's see, Facebook, what's up? Um, let's see, I'm looking for, oh, Juan says imitation techniques. For example, when I see you live like now, then I tried like to copy, not to fake me. Yeah? So this imitation technique is called shadowing. Yes, that's a good, yeah, a good technique that lots of people find really helpful for understanding a basic rhythm of a sentence and so on. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes, so those of you asking, this is an American English I speak American English, and this dictionary is an American English dictionary, yeah? So this is my recommendation, too, okay? Um, others, I'm looking for your others. Oh, some of you are asking about, like, other apps, other, um, other, other companies that create uh, apps, study apps, and things like that. So I, I think that everybody has the chance to choose what is the best for them. So it's hard for me to say, this is the best app or that is the best app. Of course, I think our team, <laughs> English Class 101, makes an amazing, uh, amazing like number of courses and pathways and has a lot of different tools to help you. So I think we do a pretty good job. So English Class 101, check us out. <laughs> okay, let's go to my last tip then. My last tip, uh, number five, is scripts. This is the last one that I think is really, really important to have. It's so useful uh, for improving your listening skills, especially. And you can use this for your reading skills. So a script is the written content, the written information uh, of what you are listening to. So when you listen to um, like a podcast, right? and you're, you're listening to two people talking or maybe just one person talking, and you think, I didn't quite catch that word. I didn't, what did they say? I don't know. You can check the script and see what they said. And that can help you because it, sometimes in American English, a lot of the time, we make sounds really short. Yeah. So when we do this, it's sometimes hard for learners to catch those sounds, right? Because we do it so quickly. With a script, you can check those parts and go, ah, that's how the, a native speaker pronounces that phrase. So scripts are super, super important. Of course, not all podcasts have scripts. Um, some do, some do not. We have scripts for all of our audio and video lessons at EnglishClass101.com. So you can use those uh, for your studies as well. Okay. All right. Uh, some of you are also writing about um, uh, writing. Like, what should I do for writing? I'm going to talk about writing and how I use a notebook in part two. So please stick around for that. Okay, others, all right, I don't see anything else, so let's take a super quick break, and then we'll go to part two where I'm going to talk about um, using my notebook, some tips for using a notebook effectively for your studies. Uh, I hope that will answer some of your questions. Also, if you are writing, some of you are also going, how do I learn fast? How do I learn fast? I don't know you, so I cannot give you personally a perfect recommendation, but <laughs> I would encourage you, go back to check the first live stream of this year where I talk about building a study plan for the year and design, like checking yourself, checking your level. Everybody is different, right? So we have to know ourselves first and then we move forward with our own plan, yeah? So there's no one perfect plan for everybody. Okay, let's uh, quickly review. If you missed it earlier, if you are looking for flashcards, uh, so if you want a resource, if you are trying to build your vocabulary, the team has created a flashcard set, more than 1,500 flashcards that have pictures, yeah? So if you have flashcards, great. If you have flashcards with pictures, they help you to remember so much better. It's much easier to remember the word for, you know, 
phone if you have a picture with it. So these flashcards all have pictures. You can print them out and study them, play games with them, whatever. So this can be a super, super good tool to build your vocabulary for like basic everyday things. So if you are working on building your vocabulary, this is totally free. You can get it 100% free. You can find this at EnglishClass101.com. The link is below the video on YouTube or above the video on Facebook. You can, if you have an EnglishClass101.com account, you can sign in here to get these. If you do not, you can make a free account. You need your name and your email address to do that. So please check this out. I hope this helps you if you want to do some vocabulary study, okay? All right, so let's go to part two now. Um, so part two, I'm going to talk about notebook and writing tips. Also, I forgot earlier, so I'm also, I'm. if you haven't, please make sure to hit the like button and share this video because it helps other people to find the lesson. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to like and share right now. Okay, all right. Um, I'm looking quickly through your questions. Hi, everybody on Facebook. Hello, Kasem and Fazal and John Contreras. Hi, Sami, what's up? Uh, Wakar, hi. You want to send messages? You can send messages live here. Okay, let's go to the next one. Some of you are saying, asking very specific questions. If you, I want to say at, in this lesson, as I say a lot, there's no such thing as the best thing right? Everybody has different needs. So we have to try things out and get some ideas about ourselves first. Like I can't recommend one thing perfect for thousands of people, <laughs> right? But there's a lot of resources. I have made many videos about these topics. So I suggest you start there. Start with a search. Okay, let's go to notebook tips. How should I use my notebook? Okay, so I said at the beginning I would show you my my old study notebook. This is this is one. I have many. <laughs> Maybe you do too. So let's talk about how to use your notebook. What can you do with a notebook? So the first thing I like to do with my notebook is I like to write new words. So in my case, uh, for this study, uh, this study session I want to show you, I was reading, so this was a Japanese study session, you can do uh, in English, I was reading a book. I use my notebook, one thing, to write new words. So when I'm reading something, usually when I'm reading, I find a new word and I go, what is this? <laughs> what is this? So I go in my notebook and I write the word, you can kind of see it, different language, yeah? So you can see, I, I number, I put the number, I put the page number of the book where I found it, I put the, I number the new vocabulary word and I highlight my new word. So I write the new word down, yeah? And then I check my dictionary later, right? So I use my notebook to write new words. This is one thing that I do. I said before too, when you physically, when you yourself, when you write by hand, it really helps you to remember the information better and to be able to create with that information. Yeah? So physically writing, not just putting things into your computer, using your hand to write something is so, so important to, to do. So this is one thing I do. So I have, maybe you can see, I have a long list of vocabulary words that I found during some reading session. So I kept my vocabulary words here and then I checked the meaning in English. So this is one thing to do with your notebook, okay? Second tip for notebook use is to try translations. Try translations. So by this I mean when you find a sentence that seems interesting to you, like this sentence is interesting in English, how can, how would I say this maybe in my native language, right? You can try to translate, I'm looking for one, okay. You can try to translate it into English or try to translate it into your language just as an exercise, as another way to try to understand, to try to think about the connection between your language and the language you are studying. So I won't read them to you, but in my case, here's some examples. I copied, in my notebook, I copied the sentence from the book, yeah? So, and then I made a translation. I made my best effort for the translation. This was not for class, this was not for school, this was just for me. I thought, 
This is how I might say this sentence in English, right? This is just an exercise. So this is something else you can do. Try translating the thing that you found, yeah? In my case, I, I like to do this kind of thing, translating from the book. Like, I find this sentence, or I find an interesting paragraph, I try to translate that as an exercise, okay? So that's another thing I like to do. Let's go to number three. Time is going quick, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so the next three, or the next three, the next one, number three, practice your handwriting. Oh my gosh, it's so important, right? So you can use your notebook to practice handwriting. Here, I'll show you a page uh, from Japanese study. I wrote the same character so many times, yeah? <laughs> and I picked a notebook that has little squares. So I could practice inside the square. My handwriting is really small anyway, but I use these tiny, tiny notebooks, like tiny notebook squares to practice, you know, just basic things, very, very basic things even, just for practice. So you can use your notebook to practice your handwriting as well, okay? So this is tip number three. Um, tip number four, I see some of you are sending questions. I see you. I will get to you in just a second. I want to get to the end of the tips. Uh, number four, number four, tip four is to write sentences and questions. So I know this is one thing many learners struggle with. We, we maybe we use like a single vocabulary word when we learn it, right? But we forget to practice writing a sentence or writing a question, especially. So with my students, I notice they usually come to class and they are in their experience. The teacher asks the question, right? The teacher asks, how are you? What did you do last weekend, right? The students sometimes don't practice question-making skills. And they realize fast, like, oh, no, this is a weak point for me, <laughs> right? That's okay. So you can use your notebook to practice making some questions. I have one here somewhere. So you can use this. Ah, uh, I have, oh, here. Okay, I only have it in the language I was studying. But I had a, a list of questions I made with the information. Like, in my case, I made these questions because I was going to talk to someone about this topic. So I made my list of questions here. Uh, in my notebook before I went to have this meeting with this person. So you can use your notebook to write sentences and to write like questions. Again, it's for your practice only, okay? Uh, all right, I will go to the last one and then I'll go to your questions. I see some of you saying hello. Hi everyone on Facebook, welcome. Let's go to the last tip and then I'll take a look at your questions. So my last one, uh, number five, is to use your notebook for review and progress checks. So I mentioned this earlier with video recording and audio recording. When you record yourself, you can look back. You can watch the video from last week or last month and you can see your progress, right? You can do the same thing with your notebooks. Like if I look at my notebook from 10 years ago and I was doing basic, super basic things, but now I'm, you know, translating books on like design, like, <laughs> wow, it's really exciting to see that progress, yeah? So you can use your notebook to review, and you should, <laughs> right? And you can also check your progress. So when I say use your notebook for review, I mean, when you write down those new vocabulary words, come back. So the next day you flip you flip open your, your notebook. Oh yeah, that's my word from yesterday. Maybe I can make a sentence with that. Oh, like this is a word I studied last week. Do I still remember this? So using this uh, to review is great and you can use it um, to see how you're progressing. Yeah, to make sure you're progressing. So these are the ways that I use my notebook. Um, and I saw a couple questions I wanted to answer quickly. Um, where, where was that one? I thought I saw, yeah, Rosie, you said, uh, how do you organize the things you write down in your notebook? It's a good question. So I tend to be kind of like, um, in like what I'm doing in the moment. In my case, I don't say, this is my vocabulary section. This is my, I don't know, sentence writing section. I tend to go by study session by study session. So in my case, I label um, my notebook uh, with like the date of my study. 
Um, so maybe let's see, I'm looking for an example here, but I usually, I will put like the date of the study there and then I'll mark, like you can see here, I didn't put the date on this page, but I'll put the page number. I have like page 24 here. So I'll put the page number of the thing I learned, right? And so I kind of track my sessions, like what did I learn this session and how did I practice that? So I'll have maybe like, I don't know, in this case, maybe two to four pages in one study session, maybe. Um, and I will have all the vocabulary words from that section on those pages. So I kind of go in order, like just sort of in like a time flow. It's very, it's like reading a book. Like I can see my study information as I read the book, if that makes sense. So that's how I organize. It's by my study session. I don't have a different section for like vocabulary and a different section for handwriting. That works for me. Maybe it doesn't work for you, but this is what I like to do. Mm. So this is what I like. Okay, so um, let's go to the last one because time is super, super gone. <laughs> so I want to go to the last uh, section of tips very quickly. I will show you um, there are only three, so please, please don't panic. We're only going to talk about three. I want to end with flashcard tips. I talked about flashcards uh, in part one. These are old flashcards. Um, I recommend, of course, spaced repetition flashcards. Spaced repetition flashcards I talk about all the time on this channel. But um, they are flashcards, digital flashcards, that you study something. So you study something one time. Okay, I got a new word great and then you finish it right and then the system the digital system remembers to tell you hey you studied this recently study it again the next time you open the app or the next time you open the system and if you get it right great you see it later like two days later if you get it wrong it will show it to you again right so the system tracks your answers did you get it right did you get it wrong if it's wrong you're gonna see it again so a spaced repetition flashcard system is so helpful for your learning. We have one at EnglishClass101.com. You can check it out at there. So some flashcard tips. One is study every day. This is what I found the best way to improve my vocabulary. I saw the biggest increase in my vocabulary when I studied on my way to work and on my way home from work. Many years ago, I studied, I was doing like, I think 15, 20 minutes or so commute to work, like on the train and 15, 20 minutes at home. And that was always for me, my vocabulary study time on my phone. I was studying with the spaced repetition system and my vocabulary went pew. <laughs> so I recommend study every day. And if you can study at the same time every day. So you create a rhythm for yourself. In my case, it was literally, really just short time, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening. It's 30 minutes in a day, right? And I saw a big improvement. So if you can create this kind of study schedule for yourself, it will really help you um, with your flashcards. Because if you have just flashcards like this sitting in like your house or something, you pick them up once a week, you don't make much progress, right? So make sure you study often and you try to keep that, that study schedule for yourself. Um, the last tip I have, number three, is to remember, add new words, yeah? So when you use uh, like flashcards like this, maybe, maybe you study all of them and, you, and then you go, okay, I'm done, right? But you need to get new words for yourself to study, right? So make sure you don't study the same thing, the same 100 words for months and months and months and months, right? So make sure that you are studying um, new things also. So this is another reason I recommend um, digital like spaced repetition flashcards because the system automatically knows when you are ready for a new word. So make sure um, you keep these tips in mind for your vocabulary studies. Many of you are asking, how do I learn fast? How do I learn fast? consistency <laughs> yeah so I hope that helps you okay so I have to finish there Woo, that was, I got through it all phew that's good um some of you are wow lots of you are still saying hello hi everyone on Facebook welcome uh so today I have to finish because time is about up 
Um, so I hope that this lesson was helpful, especially about notebook tips. Like I said, I think a notebook is the best tool. It's the most basic tool, but it is so, so important. And there are so many ways that you can use it. I have, I gave you some ideas in part two, but of course you try it and see what works for you, right? You have to try the thing and see how you feel about it. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's end. Let's end there. So I will be back next week. Uh, of course, uh, where is the lesson information? Next week, I'll be back. Uh, same time, same channel. Where is next week's lesson? Okay, here. <laughs> next week, I'll be back on Wednesday, February 1st, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is New York City time. If you don't know your local time, please use your Google skills. Or you can set a notification on Facebook or on YouTube. <laughs> or if you follow me on Instagram, sometimes I post a reminder in my Instagram stories. You can find me on Instagram from the link in the YouTube description. Uh, so come find me there. Next week, I'm going to talk about basic job interview questions and answers. So I want to cover just some very, very basic um, yeah, Q&A practice for professional Setting. So I hope that that is helpful for you. Okay, so I'll end today's lesson there. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I hope that you got some good ideas uh, of like different study tools to use. You have many tools, very basic tools, but these very basic tools are very important and very helpful. So don't forget them, right? Show them some love. Of course, we love video and we love audio and podcasts, but don't forget these basic things are your friends. Uh, also, of course, don't forget, if you want to get the uh, free flashcards I mentioned, the flashcards that have a picture on them, you can find this link um, from the YouTube description or the Facebook description too. So check this out. You can get all of these uh, flashcards with pictures for free. All right, so I will say goodbye for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. Have a great week. Have a great weekend.